Today begins the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign put on annually by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and probably for good reason if you live right here in North Dakota. In 2012, North Dakota had the highest DUI fatality rate in the nation. And according to 24-7 Wall Street, the number of drunk driving deaths in North Dakota, wait to hear this, it rose by over 64% from 2002 to 2012. Absolutely shocking news right there. Then in 2013, new DUI legislation was passed that essentially really copied a decade-long program in South Dakota. It's called the 24-7 Sobriety Program. Many people initially kind of doubted how this program would be effective. Would it actually work to lower drunk driving rates in North Dakota? So with us tonight to analyze the effectiveness of this new law, this new program, the Attorney General of the great state of North Dakota, Mr. Wayne Stenson. Mr. Stenson, thanks for joining us, sir. Good to be with you, Chris. So let's talk about this 24-7 sobri sobriety program. Many people that may not be even aware of essentially what it is. Can you give us kind of a quick synopsis of what it is and how it works? Sure, I can. This is a program that I inaugurated here in North Dakota about a decade ago, having borrowed it from South Dakota, where it proved to be a rather successful program. And uh, we started out as a condition of bail for repeat DUI arrestees and the provision would uh, require that as a condition of bail the person could not consume any alcohol and to ensure compliance with that provision of the bail order they were required to go in and be actually tested blow into the tube in the morning go into the uh, uh, law enforcement center in the evening blow into the tube again and if they, uh, if they blew clean, then they were free to go. But if not, they were taken into custody and had to appear before the judge the next day after spending a night in jail. It proved to be rather successful here. So in 2013, when the legislature enacted the new DOI uh, toughening statutes that uh, were passed in 2013, we initiated that as a condition of a sentence for repeat offenders. And those individuals have to be on the program for a year, a full one year period of time. They are required, as I mentioned, to go in in the morning or in the evening. At their expense, they pay a dollar per test. So they're paying the freight on all of this. Uh, if they can't afford or if they have difficulty getting into the getting into the law enforcement center, we have those scram bracelets that you wear around your ankle that will assure that you're not consuming alcohol. That gets downloaded on a real-time basis. And again, any violation, the person is taken into custody and, um, and then has to sit, spend the night in jail, come before the judge, and explain uh, why it is they should be put back in the program. We are seeing a 96% success rate for the people that come in and actually conduct that test. Uh, right now in North Dakota, there are 2,000 people who are on that program. Wow. The results show something that I think is rather impressive, and that is that the number of, in 2012, the year before the new law took effect, uh, we, were, we had about 8,200 DUI convictions in North Dakota. In 2014, the first full year that this law was in effect, we were down under 6,000. So a substantial reduction. Likewise, we're seeing that the reduction in the number of fatalities on the highways in North Dakota went from 87 in 2012 down to 34 in 2014, the year after this, uh, this new law took effect. So a substantial reduction, even though we were seeing an increase in the population in North Dakota, more people out on the highway, obviously a lot more driving going on across the state of North Dakota, but a significant reduction in the number of highway fatalities and so, the number of DUI arrests and convictions. So a good, good thing. And, and of course, is not good enough until we don't have any arrests. But, uh, but so far, the signs and the statistics show that it's a program that seems to be working well. Help me understand what I'm missing, and maybe I just misheard you, but I, I heard you say, I think, initially that this is a program that you'd been uh, working on for over a decade. Is that correct, or am I missing something? Yes, we, we started about a decade ago just as a pilot program. We borrowed it from South Dakota where the Attorney General down there inaugurated, with, inaugurated it with the same kind of conditions. I came up here and met with the judges just in one judicial district here in uh, Bismarck Mandat, asked them if they as a pilot program would be willing to assist. They were happy to do that and then as time went along we expanded the program and then in 2013 we uh, actually enacted the statute that makes a mandatory term of a conviction for a repeat offender one year 
participation in the 24-7 uh, sobriety program, no alcohol, and to assure that they're actually uh, complying with those provisions of the sentence, uh, they have to be tested on a regular basis. Two more things on this topic I want to get to fairly quickly, uh, Mr. Stenson. One is that you said, hey, we've been doing this now for about a decade. You also said we've seen great results from it, but you heard my open saying over from 2002 to 2012, we've seen an increase in DUI fatalities by over 64%. Uh, how are you measuring that those are good results? The, well, the, what, the, the new law that makes this a mandatory provision of, uh, of a DOI subsequent offense uh, took effect in 2013. Okay. And so since that law took effect, this is the number, the reductions that we're seeing. So, and of course, statistics are, can be stubborn things, and you need to watch these things over a long period of time. But so far, what we're seeing is some very good results, uh, a reduction from 8,300 DUI convictions down to under 6,000. That's a good thing. Same and I thing, agree, but I think a remarkable reduction on the highways. But that 2002 to 2012 number, those are not good results. Can we both agree on that? They were not good okay. results. They were not good results. And of course, at the same time, you'll recall there were some horrific accidents here in North Dakota uh, that really was the impetus for the legislature deciding that we've had enough. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. We need to get tough. And, and the law certainly was a tough one, and I think the 24-7 program is, is really a remarkable success, and I want to continue making sure that we're doing that and that it is working and, and that it's addressing the root problem. You know, for years we have been telling people, if you continue to drink and drive, we're going to stop you from driving. Well, you don't have to spend much time looking at the court records or in the newspaper and seeing the tremendous number of people who are arrested for driving under suspension, driving under re revocation. What we need to tell them is if you don't quit drinking and driving, we're going to stop you from drinking. Right. We have the technology to do that, and that's what this program is designed to accomplish. And I think what's interesting is what I'm hearing you say, and I want to put words in your mouth, Mr. Stenger, but hey, this is a cause and effect as far as the lowering of DUI fatalities, DUI arrests. Um, Mr. Stenger, I've got 60 seconds left. I want to give you the last word here, but on a different topic, you're actually going to be in Fargo Friday uh, discussing the waters of the U.S. rule. Quick, if you can, tell us what's going on there. What's the latest? The, the, of course, as everyone knows, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers has adopted what I think is the most controversial and legally unsupportable rule, which takes under jurisdiction of the uh, federal government virtually all waters in the states, particularly here in North Dakota. We filed a lawsuit challenging that, uh, that rule that takes effect August 28th. We asked uh, for a preliminary injunction uh, so that while this lawsuit is pending that the rule doesn't take effect on August 28th as, uh, as scheduled. And so we're going before Judge Erickson in uh, Fargo on Friday, uh, federal courthouse at 1.30, to press our case uh, of why we think this rule ought not to take effect until uh, we have a chance for a full hearing on the merits of our lawsuit. Mr. Stenger, we'd love to have you back very, very soon, obviously, after that meeting or after this judge comes out with a decision. Attorney General of the great state of North Dakota, Wayne Stenger, thank you for your time, sir. A real pleasure, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.